Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your girl, Yamato. Get ready for a very, very spicy deck profile featuring OP06, an aggro variant to this list in which is different than most that you have seen thus far. Now, we do know there's a Skypea variant of Yamato, there's a Fortress build, in which Fortress will be coming to the channel here soon, but for now, I'm going to show you guys what I've been cooking up with Yamato, and which you probably haven't seen yet, and I advise you to give it a shot, let me know what you think about it, leave all your comments, your thoughts, and your opinions down, down below. Without further ado, let's dive into this list, let me cook, because it's going to be pretty spicy. As you can see, this is probably different than what you've normally seen, today we are running with a lot of triggers here, so we go, not, not triggers, sorry, a lot of 2Ks. So we do 4 Izo, 4 Mihawk, 4 Hiyori, 2 Hiyori, and 2 Hatching. In which I will show you guys this list, how it performs, and then we'll talk about the updated list. And how I, how, how I have done at 2 Locals in which I've taken the deck to. And all that sort of thing, the changes I've make, I'm going to make in and all that. But for, without further ado, we're going to get into this one first, and then we'll, at the end of the video, we'll dive into the next one. Now the way this works, there's many avenues to build Yamato. We've seen different variants, but I want you guys to give Kami a chance. She allows you to search out your Fishman, in which you always have access to Hody Jones or Arlong. Arlong is a card in which you don't see in a lot of Yamato lists. You'll see it in some, but I think a lot of people aren't exploring this. In any case, Kami allows you to make sure you always have access to Hody Jones in the late game, considering she can search out the Merfolk which also includes you're able to search out Shirahoshis as well if you if you want to include them into your deck, which is really nice, by the way. So it allows you to get rid of dead cards at the end game if you don't need your, you know, your Kikios here, or if you don't need maybe like a, uh, I don't know, an impact or whatever. Now, Kami for your turn one play, ideal. Any other time, you're only using her to as a 1k counter or on the turn before you play uh, Hody Jones to make sure you draw into Hody Jones. She also thins the deck. Considering the fact that we swing for double hit or double attack every single turn due to our leader ability, we always apply pressure. So we don't necessarily need a body on board if we can just stack, you know, like seven Dawn and go and go swinging. I mean, we're hitting them numbers, of course. So it's not always, if you play it and then you see something like two Onamis and then like a Hiori or a Momonosuke or something, you shouldn't even feel bad because that you're thinning your deck, putting those cards on bottom Especially when you're going into the turns when you need the Hody Jones. That way it's you're drawing into this or you're playing another Kami to draw into it, if that makes sense to you. It doesn't matter if you don't see the Hody on the very first one, as long as you get it before turn seven or sir seven dawn. Now, she enables you to do that, of course. She allows you to search it. She also allows you to search out for Arlong. This card's disgusting. For two reasons. We have two decks in the format, right? We've got a Katakuri. And then we have the big bad himself, Gekko Moria. So first of all, we'll talk about Katakuri and why he's pretty strong into Yamato, if played properly. But most of the time, we cook this map, let's be honest. But he enables something that this deck, that makes this deck not be able to do certain things. So a lot of yellow decks right now are running Hiyori. And we do this for simple reasons. You know, we, we stack our life with a trigger, right? In this matchup, you lose tempo doing that, considering that a decent category player will just swing into you, peek at life, move it somewhere else. Therefore, whatever that Onami was on top, whatever that Kikyo was on top, whatever you put on top of your life for the for the end game, whether it was like Namaru or disappear, you know what I mean? Category can just remove them or move them somewhere else, or drop a big mom. There's just so many things that you guys have to consider before you drop down two Dawn worth of Hiyori in which you can put that two Dawn and swing with something else on board into a Katakuri. That's the downside of playing into this deck. If you are trying to stack your life, just know that it's very difficult to do that considering you can just move it. That's about it. Other than that, we cook generally every Katakuri player out there unless we just get super unlucky and they get super lucky with triggers. It's yellow versus yellow, boys and girls. We know how this works. But most of the time, going first, going second matters not unless they're stacking a bunch of Sanjis. They get super lucky with Sanjis. If not, we're, we're just, we're cooked them. Now, when it comes to Gecko Moria, the thing is with this guy, going second, 
is terrible considering he builds boards so fast with his leader ability or cards from hand he's very hard to deal with if you go second as Yamato but I'll tell you there's a trick to this and it's called Arlong Arlong will work the same in the Katakuri matchup as it's going to work in the Gekko Moria matchup this man stops Katakuri from peeking at your life when you do like your little ability thing here with Hiyori because he can't swing this stops all attacks from leaders until the next turn, which is amazing. So, in Gekko Moria's case, he can't build board. He can't do the whole, I'm going to drop an Ice Age on you, and I'm going to drop a Greater Eruption, and then I'm going to go ahead and get my boy out, which is Absalon here, and pop something on board. He can't do that unless he's playing all these cards from hand. Alright, cool. But he can't get this from the graveyard for free. You know what I mean? Because he can't use his leader ability because he can't swing. So he misses the opportunity of developing the board, going wider, essentially. Which is nice, due to the fact that Arlong just stops his attack. So that's something to consider, going first or going second. Arlong in the meta. I think people need to realize how good this card actually is, into a lot of deck matchups. Now, with that being said, we're going to be talking about Ezos here. In which, I am not a fan of. And I will show you guys the finished product, my changes and all that sort of thing at the end of the video as we normally do. I don't like this card because it, it only has one use, right? I get it, a lot of cards only have one use, sure. But he's a 2k counter, which in the late game your opponent's often going to be expecting. If you're playing, you know, at a higher skill game or your opponent knows what Yamato does, and you know, we're going to play down Hody Jones and turn turn 7 Don and rest two blockers. They might have a third one on board already by that point. They might, depending on what they are. If they triggered up multiple Sanjis, or you're playing against Sakazuki who just really looked for his Borsalinos and Rebecca's. It's going to be a little bit harder to get around all these. But you might argue that's what Ezo's for. Ideally, let's say you're at 10 Don, right? You drop the Hody, you rest the two blockers, you play down the Ezo, you rest the third. This is swinging for 10k due to your leader effect. This is swinging 5. 5k. Very easily blocked. So personally, I've taken out all of the Ezo's this is a situational card which you rarely ever get a lot of value out of because you are spending three dawn which that three dawn can be attached to somewhere else just to play this i get it you can attach two of it with your leader swing but you can attach three without having to do this and we max out the amarus in the future build which we'll talk about but i just feel like this card over this is just so much better at the end of the day and then you could also swap this out for satorius you can swap this out for veggies you can swap this out for going max hatchings this is situational, in my opinion. Cook me if you want, but give it a shot. Without it, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think about it. Now, when it comes to the other triggers here, we run Hiorius here. This is a card in which I'm experimenting with. This might not be in the final product. It's very good. You can pop it off your life and give yourself 6k for the whole turn, which is really, really nice. Then play it on a Momo to put this back on top of your life and do it again, which is pretty cool. But that's pretty much all she's in here for other than being a 2k. Now, the Mihawk is a key piece in which I don't see in a lot of lists. Put it in your deck, try it out, and let me know what you think about it. This card's disgusting in Yamato, depending on what variant you are going. What happens is, turn one, you drop the Kami down. Turn two, you're swinging, right? You're going 8k into lead. Okay, cool. In a Katakuri situation, let's say they get, let's say they get no triggers at all. Right? Which is very likely, to be fair. Let's say they get one trigger if you want to. Let's say they get a Satori or a Cracker. Cool. On the following turn, you don't have to go wide. I mean, sorry, you don't have to go tall. You can drop down a Mihawk. The Mihawk can drop down the Ohm. The Ohm gets the Holly. Which is really, really good. Because that goes from one body to four bodies, just like that, with three Dawn. And you still have two Dawn left over to attach the leader and swing. Because you go five Dawn that turn, correct? Which is really, really good. Now, ideally, Ohm comes in rested, which is fine, because most players will either drop a Kadetsu to pop it immediately at that point, or they'll do something with, um, depending on if you took life the previous turn, right? Depending on if you took life. Now, in any case, the Ohm comes in rested, yes? So your opponent is going to try to remove this, which is totally okay, because that saves you a life. They're not attacking into you, they're attacking the Ohm. It doesn't matter. Fine. You just play another one at some point if need be. But that developed you one, two, three bodies on board, top of your leader swing into the 
the matchup. That's a lot of tempo. Of course, you lose some cards in hand, obviously, because you lose cards and you play cards. Makes sense, but you have all these bodies on board with a unit, with a leader who swings double and who puts every other deck they're playing against on a clock, essentially. Because once Hody comes down, it's pretty much GG at that point, unless you're behind. Now, the other method to this guy is the fact that he plays down a slash unit, okay? So hear me out here. A slash unit. Look at Wano. What is this? A slash. This is also a slash. Okay? So keep that in mind. Both of these two units are slashes, let alone Ohm is a slash. Arlong is a slash. Kikyo is also a slash. This man's playing everybody. Everybody in which that you generally see in a, in a Yamato deck, he can play down for three Dawn, which is really, really good. Let alone that this man can attack your active units on your opponent's board by giving your giving it two rested dawn from your leader ability which is really really good easy and this one allows you to ko stuff which is strong as well now the other thing that he can do is drop down a kikyo kikyo comes on the board rested you think your opponent's going to attack into this no because you're going to gain a life therefore on the following turn this is swinging for 8k but like i said give this guy a shot he's a lot of fun he makes the deck do a lot of crazy scenarios. Being able to develop an ohm into a holly for three dawn is pretty gross. But in any case, we're also running the four Onami. This should be a staple no matter what version you're playing. In my opinion, I think this card is really, really good. Considering the fact that it can pop blockers on your opponent's board like the Borsalinos, the Sabos, all of the good stuff. I mean, unless they played Sabo, you know what I mean. But yeah, this does really, really solid. This also gives you Banish, which makes your opponent have to give you cards from hand. So, and then we run two Momonosuke's. I think two is that sweet spot. I don't think you need four. I think two is the, the best that you want here out of all variants when it comes to Yamato. Unless you guys are playing Fortress and you guys want to max out on all, you know, defensive units, be my guest. I just think two is where it's at when it comes to Yamato. Now, he allows you to do very few things depending on how your list is set up if you're heavily based in wanu he allows you to bounce any wanu card that's already on board to put on top of your life which is nice it gives you an extra life extra cushion and most of the time on turn five if you play this if hiori is on board this goes up to life if for whatever reason you're able to guard out of your opponent's attacks you can drop hody down and just take this from life with the hody effect which is cool but overall our events here are generally about about the same we run two Amaru, three, uh, you are the one who should disappear, and then we run one Reject. I don't rely on this card. I'm just testing this one. I don't really like it as much. I get it. It's very strong. It's going to be banned. But if you're going out to regionals, you're going out to, to the Hampton, you should expect to see it. And again, you should probably use it. That's just the way it's going to be. Now, without further ado, we will dive into a couple games here with this list, and I will show you guys the finished product of this variant at the end of the video we'll talk about some locals matchups that we did this week from two different uh places and all that sort of thing let's dive into some games here see you guys in a split second all right ladies and gentlemen here we go diving into a bunch of games today coming at you guys with the yamato deck in which it's quite spicy especially considering we are playing with merfolk and yes kami never whiffs she did her job we got our hoodie in the first turn which is going to be pretty good following to the next considering the fact that we're just going to go eight to face that's typically how these uh, Katakuri matches go, especially when you go first. Nice, pick no cards from that. Awesome, love to see it. Sucks for you, but... Now, I've also noticed that most decks that play plays into Yamato, they like to take the first hit, which is okay, but it gives them counter for the second, right? Which does make sense. But if they choose to counter out of the first hit, you just throw down Onami during the second time, and then you smack them again for 8k with Banish. So, often not, it's better to, it's better to take the first hit than, uh, you know, risking the second with Banish. So they do get a 2k off that draw, and they actually get a trigger from Sanji here too, so I have to work around both of these. Six cards in hand. We already know what one of them are, so it shouldn't be that difficult. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Three Dawn left. He could invest a Paro Sparrow or just go to my face, so. Get an Ohm off that. Let's do the Mihawk into the Ohm and hopes that we can find a Holy. 
Nice. Let's go, boys. And then we'll throw down Hiori here for now. I get it. We could have just attached two Dawn and, and swung that way. But either way, this is going to give me a 2k counter, I think. And the Hiori is on board just so we can actually pop it back with Momonosuke if need be. Because we're at 5 Dawn. Or sorry, yeah, we we're 5 Dawn right now. So. I could throw him down, but I don't think we. I don't think we need it. We have a lot of swings the following turn that potentially can go for game. Or fish out a lot of cards in hand. So we're just going to let it go here. That would probably be the smart play. I don't think he's going to attack with the Sanji. He'll probably develop something. Yep. Get rid of Holy. But that's the whole turn there, so. Let's go and get down to Hody Jones. Arrest the Sanji and the Gadetsu. Well, that's nice, actually. Hmm. You know what? Let's clear board instead. I forgot to give Hody the two dawn, but that's fine. Let's go five to face. This will force him to give me counter from hands. We don't necessarily care too much about the one attacker he has. The Sanji was the one we wanted to get rid of. Four cards left. He's at eight Dawn here, so he can either attach a Dawn to Leader and then drop a Big Mom down, or he can just go wall up with Sanji's if he has them. Because by no means can he go for game this turn. If he decides to Dawn up to Gadetsu even further, we take that or the Leader swing. Oh, he's actually going to try to clear Hody with both, I assume. Because 10k into Gadetsu here too. Yep. Counter out. And then, uh, that's GG. This one you can have. Unless we get a Beige and a Maru here, right? Four cards in hand, yeah. I think we got this one. Let's go seven to face. Okay. One Sanji up. Another Hody down. And now we rest that. And good game. That's one down, boys. This is one of those matchups in which can go either way, considering the fact that we are both like super aggressive and we rely on triggers here. Now, Bello Betty, though, if we're pertaining to the recent build that I put out with this list, it's quite a good deck right now in the metagame, especially playing against all yellow decks here. They're very explosive. They get a lot of bodies on board for free off triggers. It's kind of obnoxious to deal with. So I do hope uh, this doesn't go uh, too bad. We did get to go first though, which is nice. Although we didn't get a really good hand here. So that does kind of suck. We do have the Mihawk into the Okiku if need be. So you know what? No, no, no. Let's go, let's go five to face first. Which I would assume they would guard out, right? Or risk the fact that they get two triggers. Alright, so they give me a Karasu, which is unexpected of all cards in hand. But uh, we can play on the Mihawk, get myself a Kiku on board. And which he should survive. But they, they might attack this, considering the fact they're still at four life. If they do, we'll guard out, because then they have four Dawn here. No rush units available. Unless they do the Inazuma and do the thing, but no, apparently not. So Karasu hits down. I go to 4k. Hmm. I'll give out my 2k here. The reason why we guard out is because they're still at 4 life. So in case I get anything off trigger, I can't play it, considering they, they are at 4 life. 5 cards. Let's just go to face here. We'll go 9k. And then we'll go, I guess, give one Dawn to Mihawk and attack with the 6k with Kikyo. I would think, again, you would take the first hit, just in case you get triggers here. Because who's to say I don't have Onami in hand and do the Banish next time? Speaking of Onami. But we'll go 6, or 5, sorry. Then we'll go 6 with Kikyo. 
That's one damage. But you get a trigger. Alright, so we have a Lindbergh to deal with. So Lindbergh should be able to pop the Mihawk. If they swing with Karasu, might do the minus one effect. They, he can pop the Mihawk that way. Right, so we develop a Cracker. Not sure if that was supposed to be the play or not, but, you know, it'll work out. Considering they are lower life than me, Cracker is a threat. I don't have means to, like, get rid of it, so. That's a problem. Especially considering he's also a trigger, so he does work off Bella Betty's effect, so he can be boosted up. So that's going to be a 10k swing, bare minimum. Alright, so we are attacking with Lindbergh and Karasu here, and potentially Leader. Those four swings come in my way. I don't have the counter in hand to deal with all these. So surely you are not clearing... Or I guess you can clear board, right? I'd clear board here. 8k. Gives the Mihawk minus one. That's crazy, man. Alright, so we get no nothing from that. Just the ohm. That gets popped. 9k swing Lindbergh. Gotta take this hit as well. See... I think you should have started with killing the Kikyo first here, and then kill the other one. Like, before you even attack life. Because now you only can attack with leader, and you chose not to, I guess you're afraid of me getting the trigger there. Which probably was wise, but... Might also have been a misplay for you. So we have 7 Dawn. We can't go offensive here, as much as I want to. I can and I can't. We could drop down the Hody Jones, go to one life, and then risk losing the following turn. So it's probably better to get the attack in with this, try to kill the body on board. Which we should be able to. So we killed the bird. Still has one card in hands. I don't know if that's going to be a 2k counter or not, so we can attach one Dawn to Yamato, and then attack into Lindbergh. Did you not notice we attached a Dawn? Okay. So I guess we don't attach a Dawn here. But hypothetically speaking, let's say they kept the Sanji, right? We would still have been able to kill the Lindbergh anyway. We'll bounce this to the top of life and we'll pass it up. That was a weird play if you ask me. We should be good here. They do have less life than us, so we can still lose two life here with the Cracker Swing. I mean, this gives us another body on board if I decide to take this one, and then a chance of getting a trigger, so I'm not really worried about it. Swing for seven, so I'm guessing they don't have a Revo card in hand. He's already rested, so I can't do anything with that. And now we just go for game next turn. Another six. Why are you just swing for six? Hey, cool. What's up? I mean, I guess we can use this, right? Don't necessarily need it, but might as well. We can get rid of either our longer Kikyo here. It doesn't really matter. Gain a free life. Ah, okay. Sabo. Weird. I guess they just given up at this point. That's fine. Six to face. I should have swung five, you know, realistically with leader. That's my bad. But it's okay. Yeah, mathematically, I should have just swung five first. And, uh, good game? Right? No trigger? Guess it doesn't matter. Let me just go 10k and, uh, move along with the day. Leader effect is so good, I swear. We'll dive into another one. I'll see you guys in a split second. We did start off with a kind of decent hand. We have the Mihawk into the Kikyo or the Arlong here. Which kind of does hamper Perona's like early pressure. But considering the fact that if we get the Kikyo on board or the Arlong on board, she cannot attack into a rested unit. She'll have to play a card down to pop it if she has it. Which is kind of nice. Takes the first hit. Possibly developing a blocker here. Goes five. Let's block out here. We'll get rid of the 1k from the Holly. 
So we don't need him right now. Yep, get a blocker down. Draw into another Kikyo, which is not good. Let's go ahead and stack our life up. And then we'll swing with 8k. Oh, Nami from the bottom. We're lucky I didn't draw that from the hand, but I guess it wouldn't have mattered because we have to get past the Borsalino here. So we'll put it on top in hopes that we can pop it when she attacks into me. She guards out. I might have just let it go. Like, realistically, I might have just let the Borsalino go there, considering I did stack the life. So it's either going to be a threat that comes down on board to swing or the Onami, realistically. Alright, she probably kills this with the the dog. Okay, cool. I probably wouldn't have done that. If she has like an extra ache or a Ryuma, I would have just done that and attached the other Don to the dog to swing. Get rid of this with Onami. Because now we have a Kuzan here on board. So hear me out. We're going to rest it. We're going to go 5 to lead with Yamato, right? She has to guard this, so I will get something from hand. And then we'll attack the Kuzan with the Hody Jones. Nice. So now we have to deal with at least one swing, bare minimum here, from this turn. Ideally, she could Ice Age me. And then pop me with the Drake or Ryoma to get rid of the Hody Jones. But then that gives her no blocker on board for the following turn. If we draw another Hody and double attack with Yamato, we pretty much win the game. Gekko Moria brings back Borsa. Yep. It's one blocker. Another Hody Jones. You'd love to see it. Let's rest this. We get an Amaru off that. You know, we might actually be able to go for game here. It's a bit risky. But playing down the Gecko Moria there gives me the impression she didn't have blockers in her hand. If she did, she would have played down double blockers, right? Maybe. Maybe she'd play down double blockers. But considering she didn't do that, this might be a safe bet. Can we get there? If she gives me this, we lo she loses. Right, full of bricks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and play into a purple Luffy, it seems. Um, this is one matchup in which I don't have a lot of experience into with Yamato, I'll be fair with you. But at the end of the day, it's going to be the same exact scenario. The fact that they can run up to 18 2k counters is pretty obnoxious in their lists. And we probably won't get off a lot of double hits here, which is okay. But at the end of the day, it's less cards out of their hand. Or sorry, it's more cards out of their hands. We have to be mindful of the Magellan. And make sure we don't have anything on board that's valuable for the poly turn. And then generally speaking, we can just run this over. But the Magellan does hurt you quite a bit, especially if he gets it on curve. It slows down our, our Hody play. It slows down Big Moms, you know, yellow, whatever. But we should be alright. We are going to guard out of this. Simply for the fact that he decided to guard out of my last hit. I need him at 3 dawn, or sorry, 3 life, before I can successfully, or sorry, before I can allow myself to take damage. Just in case we get a trigger. I can set up my life here if need be, or we can just go 10k. I'm actually willing to drop Arlong here as well if need be. Make sure he can't attack next turn. But you know what? Let's just go 10 and force him to give me the blocker or give me all of his cards in hand or take two damage. See how he wants to play this here. If he decides to take the hit, that is less Dawn that he gets to ramp up. So realistically, if he takes the smack, he goes up to what? 7 Dawn next turn. If he takes the life, it goes up to 8 Then he's at 1 life left, which puts him in kill range. Yep. I'd imagine he would have blocked. I guess he's playing cards from hand here? Oh, he is. There's a Jet Gatling with a Law. And another 2k. Another Jet Gatling. Alright. 
Well, your boy's tapped out over there. He's going to have a hard game for the rest of the game. And that might have been his only out there, considering this is his only blocker he's seen, maybe. I really hope you have another one, though. He does. Cool. So, queen comes down. Goes up to... Okay. Gets this Dawn back from the kid ability. 8k to face. We will guard out here. Like I said, we have to do the guarding, considering the fact that he's not at 3 life yet. Just in case we get a trigger. If Hody could... Like, basically rest anything from attacking, that'd be crazy. But just leaders, boys and girls, in which he can't attack me next turn, and I know he's not going to swing with his blockers here, so that should be pretty good. I just made a misplay. I should have just put the Dawn on leader here instead of that. That way I can at least get one of the blockers out. For some reason, my brain was thinking that uh, she could swing, so that's my bad. It goes six though. Blocks with queen and the 1k. Not bad. I can't hit with her. I don't know why I did that. Because realistically, if I kept all Dawn on leader there, we would have got rid of at least one blocker or dealt, dealt two damage. So that sucks. So he is at nine Dawn here. It's a potential to drop down a Kaido. goes to Polly, so that gets rid of my Arlong, which does suck. Now he's at 10 Dawn. He might be feeling safe. He might be. Which, double blocker on board, still at 4 life. He chose not to attack here. Wonder why. Why would he not attack there? Well, one card in hand. Let's go try to clear the board here. It's probably the smart play. But we're going to go face with this, and then we'll give Hody two Dawn and try to clear a blocker. Nice. I forgot to give Hody two Dawn. I'm sorry, it happens. I'm in the moment. You know what? I've done that and at Locals too. So it's something I have to get better at just, just in general. Sometimes I'm just like, go, 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 go. You know what I mean? But it's okay. We got rid of one blocker, which is totally all right. He's up to 10 Dawn. A kid. Assuming that's all he had in hand to develop, I can understand why he'd play it down. But if he had anything else, like the Luffy, the resets plays, the Kaido. That might have been time to use it. We get another Hody off of that, which is lovely. I assume you go for Hody. Would make sense. Right? You definitely go for Hody here. Or he can force a damage, but still. Yeah, okay, he's forcing damages. Mm. We could guard out with the zero cost event here, or just take this one, though. So I think we can win next turn. Regardless of how we play it. But if I do take this hit, and we drop Hody, we're at zero life, so we do have to guard, actually. Get rid of the Momo, go up to that, drop down the Ohm. We should be good now. Now we're chilling. Another Kami here. Let's do the thing, or rest the thing. Take a life. Nice, another 2k. Alright boys, let's get the work. Do you have the counter? Probably not. Nice. Not gonna lie though, he, he played really well to be fair. He defended out a lot of these attacks here. Unfortunately, though, I think the double gum gum into the one kid might have been like, it might have been too much. I don't necessarily know if that's all he had to do.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and dive into another one here. I apologize for the last video. Apparently, I forgot to hit the music button. I, I don't know. This is one of those ordeals. I, I'm sorry because I know you guys didn't get to hear music and you had to listen to me talk. It, you know. So I'll probably just include background music to that one when I go ahead and start editing. But in any case, that Perona, man, they were talking a lot of smack at the end of the game. Outside the fact that they mentioned that I had a bunch of duds in my hand. You know, my hand was bad or whatever. Keep in mind, they chose not the mulligan. So, I mean, eats their own, right? Blame it on bad hand if you want to. But you played the new pace, the cycle. You kept the hand in the beginning. What are you going to do? In any case, let's swing 8k to face here after we... No, no, no. Actually, no. Let's set up our turn. Let's take the bottom life. We'll add the Onami to the top go 6k this will at least give us a 2k counter and or two cards off life okay fair but the reason why we did it like that was a little bit slower but we can actually get rid of the borsalino or whatever blocker he decides to put down here on board assuming he does that if not we can take the onami back and then play it down to swing with vanish for the following turn Like, he knows we stacked the life, so. What do you do here? We did give him a target for Houndblaze. I know that much. But it's only... Okay, never mind. They, do, they will do it. I didn't think they would, considering it was a Hiori with no attack power. But what are you going to do? Hmm. I think we should take this one and just counter out of the Shishigi one. We won't use the effect. I know that's silly. That we probably should. But we have an option to potentially get a banish off. Because this turn we can swing for 8k with banish. Which will force more cards from hand. Or just put two cards to the trash. And we get a Kami as well. So that's awesome. Let's go 8. There's no way he takes this hit. Unless he really does not have counter for it. Nice. Two Sarus. We'll pass it up. So here's the thing. He's got four cards in hand, right? Which means one of those cards get rotated out for leader effect. So technically three cards in hand here. He needs to apply a blocker on board. Otherwise he takes two damage next turn. At the very least. So he needs to draw into one or have one in hand for this turn. Otherwise he's taking quite a bit of damage here. Okay, bottom stacks the Nami. That's fine. Rotates out Amoria. Four Don left to play with. I think you would develop a blocker, but apparently not. Okay. I want to keep the Kami, just in case we don't draw into Hody Jones next turn. So we'll take the hit. We get another Ezo. We can counter out of this one. Now, you might argue we are playing from behind here because we did not draw a Hody here, which does suck. Yep, no Hody Jones. Okay, so let's do the Onami again. Let's go 9k and then drop down a Kimi. Because I could play down Momonosuke and protect myself, but he only has two attacks here this turn. Instead, we can swing for 9, get the Banish effect off, right? Unless, somehow... Okay, cool. Play on Kami. Alright, we whiffed. That does suck. Sometimes it happens. Okay, so we have four. He has one to rotate out. He definitely needs a blocker this turn. Otherwise, he's going to lose. Because if we do draw Hody on our next turn, it, that's it. It's a wrap. Komoria should get back the blocker here because he can't pop anything in this scenario. I mean, I guess he could. Why wouldn't you get a blocker here? Oh, yeah, that's right. He never had one. My bad. He never threw one away either, so that's awkward. Um... What are we doing here?
Hmm. Okay. Very unlucky. But uh, we didn't have a Hody here in this game, and it uh, doesn't seem like we need one, realistically. Now, what I can do... We have the Momo, so we do have a blocker for the following turn. And we have the 3k event, which is nice. And it's two 2k counters here. Three 3k counters. But... I'm debating on playing her down, going up to 6k, and be able to bump her to the top of my life for my Momo effect. We have to play a little bit defensive, somewhat. I don't think we can necessarily go for game here. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So let's do this instead. Let's go to 6k. Five, 7 on left here, so we have to save 5 for the Momo. We go 8. You don't have it, so you take both these hits. There's no shot, right? Yeah, okay, cool. Alright. We get the Momo down. We bounce back the Hiori to top of life. And we go 5 with Onami. This will give us at least one card. And there's his blocker. So that means he has some 2Ks in hands. Or maybe those were both dead cards. There's the Borsalino. He's got quite a bit of swings here. Ice Age me. Alright. Do you have the removal though? That's one of the cool things here. If he does have the removal. So how do you want to do this? Goes five. Okay, not bad. Um, we'll do the thing. Take the hit. There you are. Way too late, but we got it. It's okay. So it goes to nine. It doesn't matter which one. Even without the extra 1k, we still had the counter in hand. And, uh, GG, buddy. Isn't he great? Isn't he, like, the best card ever made right now? He's so strong, man. 8k to face. And, uh, that's it. Alright. See, look, I remembered to turn on the music this time. I'm sorry. I, I did it two games in a row. Even though I said... Hey guys, when I realized it, I still did it in the Luffy match. But this time around, I fixed it. It'd be what it'd be. But we're playing against another Perona, in which we should be able to end this game, and hopefully under a couple turns, they decide to block out the first hit. Crazy, man. Just let me get an Onami off the next draw, and we're cooking. Get a brown a brand new, gets rid of Ryuma and Tsushigi, right? No, it drew the Shishigi. Okay. We'll guard out the first one, because they have four life. Hmm. This is an interesting play we can make here. We could develop this by getting rid of a Momonosuke, right? And making sure they can't attack next turn. Or we can just go 10k to face here. And force them to go down. We've already started. We're just gonna go for it. What do you do? Exactly. Alright, cool. We'll pass it up. Because they guarded out of the first one, so you might as well. We didn't develop anybody on board, so they can't pop anything. They have to force a blocker. Cool. 5k. We got to take it. Nice. Love to see it. Sweet. Hey, Kami. Can you do your job for me? I'd appreciate it, though. We're at 7 Dawn. A little bit late on the Hody. Hmm. Potentially two attacks next turn into my face. We get the 2k, which is nice. Let's see here. Six Dawn left to play with. Realistically, we can drop down the Momonosuke. But we're just going to go seven. Actually, kill brand new. They could block out and give me the 2k with the other one if they want to, but I would imagine they just give me this. 
Yep. Let's throw down a Hody. Let's do the thing. Get rid of the Kikyo. So now they can't attack. Which this means they're probably not going to attack with Borsalino here. Otherwise, they just risk two life being taken away. Unless they have another one. Got Gomoria. Gets back to Ryuma. And they get to draw some cards. You might be thinking this looks dire. But let me cook, boys. We got this. It's okay. Oh yeah, it's definitely okay now. We get another Onami off that. Hmm... We have the Amaru, we have the zero cost event. I still think we're chilling, but we have to play a little bit smart here and at least put down a blocker that they can't deal with unless they have an Ice Age or Greater Eruption in hand. So uh, we're gonna be a little bit threatening. Go 9k again. Do you have the counter? Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. Let's get this on board. We can't do anything with it. We'll pass it up. I'm willing to take both those extra lives there if I have to. No Dofi, which is totally okay. We just got really unlucky this game so far. No Hody Jones. Kami did whiff, unfortunately. Well, she didn't whiff. She got it by 2k, but she didn't whiff. Or she did whiff the Hody. Sabo on board. 6k to face. There's the two. We let this one go through. Get another body on board here. Potentially, she would swing for 10k. There's no reason to play down another body, considering you play down Sabo. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you just play down the other body first to get the effect off the of Sabo. So you go face, right? Okay. She doubles up on Sabo. I did not see that coming, actually. Bro, right there, we're real spooked right now. There's no point of you attacking. Yeah, that's right. Another Kikyo. Where is my Hody Jones? How are we supposed to get out of this? Call up. Let me think. Let me think. I just don't know what that last card is. That's... Boom, boom, boom. Rest that one. Yeah, I guess so. I guess we'll try this out. Five cards in hands. Let me do a thing here. Let me do a thing. This sh this might just give me a body. I cannot kill the Gecko Moria. There's no shot she lets that go through. At least realistically, I wouldn't think she would. So we're going to go for the Ryuma. For 10k. I know that's crazy. But hold up. We got this. Okay, that's one down. We cannot attack with Momonosuke here. So instead, we go six, right? Just to swing at face and develop another blocker on board. And we should be chilling. Yup. So ideally, she doesn't have any counter in hand. She had to play it that way, otherwise she would just give me a 2k. Let's bounce this to life. And, uh... We should win next turn. Unless she decides to go all out here with all of her blockers, with Gecko and herself. If she wants to drop a Dofi down, I don't care at this point, but there's no reason to drop the Dofi. Let's just say if she does, she loses. It seemed a little silly, but okay. Oh, well, GG to you. Yeah, sure. Why not? Let's counter out with Onami. Force this one to attack me with Gecko Moria. Yep. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Hit me. Hmm. Appreciate that. You see what you did? You done goofed. Kami never misses twice. Let's go, boys. 
seven, eight, nine. Two life left, three cards in hand. This will push me to 8k. Hody swings for 8, Momo swings for 6, the other Momo can swing for 8 if need be, or Hody can swing for 10, two sixes, with the Omaru on board. Or we can play it safe, drop down an R long. I think... Because playing down the Hody just gives me the Kikyo, right? And doesn't seem like my best interest. But the Kikyo also will fuel the R long, or fuel the zero cost event here. If we make it where she can't attack, we only have to deal with two attackers next turn. There's no shot she decides to attack with the Sabos. So let's do it like this. We'll get rid of the Kikyo. Rest the leader. Yep. Five Dawn left to play with. I cannot attack with my leader due to, due to the Dofi effect. So we just pass it up. They don't get cards in hand due to the fact that they decided uh, we decided not to attack with them. You can play Kikyo off life. 9k to face. I would think we would take this hit. Sweet. Why not? There goes one. Now, you can imagine, even if we didn't get the Onami, they still had three attacks to come my way. They could have donned up and done some things there. We played from behind for multiple turns before we even got the Hody Jones. So getting this guy on curve probably would have sealed this game a little while ago. Like, to be fair. Because now she's stuck. She has 10 Don to work with. She can't kill me this turn, so she needs to develop another blocker on board, if she has it. If not, that's it. Let's go ahead and use the zero cost event. Get rid of that. Yep. Now what do you do? Five. Why would you do that? Am I missing something? Nine Dawn. Can't Dofi even though if they wanted to. Yep. GG. Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I do appreciate everybody for making it to the end of the video. This one wasn't as long as it normally is, which, you know, I'm sorry, right? To be fair, because most of the videos I've been putting out now have been a little bit over an hour. We did play Yamato, so the games are not as long as they normally are. I apologize. But still, getting out with under an hour is still pretty good for me. Now, before we dive into it, I want to say everybody thank you for all the love and support. The appreciate the appreciation I'm getting here for all the content here throughout the One Piece community. It's been a lot of fun, especially going out to locals and meeting a couple of you guys who've watched my content all that sort of thing it's really cool to me this isn't something that i'm generally used to i have two youtube channels so at the end of the day to be able to do something like this and meet a lot of people who actually are invested or loving the content is just it puts me over the moon essentially but there's a lot of things i want to talk about here when it comes to this deck list you guys and all that sort of thing we did reach 3200 subscribers so I told you I wanted to do a giveaway at 3200 so I appreciate everybody who helped us get to that goal and who are still here helping grow the channel. 3200 subscribers are going to launch a giveaway here on the channel in which you guys will get the prizes shown when this video goes live today. I will be showing two playmats in which are up for grabs for a winner. Two winners out there by the way, we'll be doing two winners here. And I will show you guys the playmats once this video goes live let alone the details of how to enter and how to win and all that sort of thing. So please make sure you read carefully and make sure you look out for that notification here on the YouTubes. But without further ado, let's talk about the brand new deck here in which we have adjusted to from the previous one, which if you guys remember, because you should, this is what we were playing with a second ago here on the channel. And we've changed this deck to what you see here for locals that we just went to, which has been a lot of fun. Now, this deck has been what I've been playing with throughout the week from the one that you just saw. So this is the updated version. We went to two locals this week. We ended up going four and one in both of them. The one for Wednesday we went out to, we ended up playing against a Sakazuki, a Katakuri, Green Uta, and Nell, and a Reiju. The only loss that we had was against the Green Uta, 
everything else to be fair we smashed out outside of the Raju. Raju was very challenging and for those of you guys that don't know like this leader into a Yamato game is pretty scary just from the sheer fact and the numbers that this deck can produce it can go wide very very quickly even if you win the dice roll considering the nature of the deck and how it performs let alone the cards that Vinsmoke has access to can be pretty spooky especially when they're dropping the seven drops Ichiji's on board or they're dropping the Niji's on board to remove some of your pressure which can be pretty absurd but then this is with and or without the stage playing into a good Reiji player can pretty much put a dent in Yamato very quickly if you're not prepared for it but we did win this match our only loss was to Uta and we're talking green Uta not the red one come on now we're talking green Uta and it's something you guys need to pay attention to I think personally as Yamato I don't have a lot of practice with Yamato into this matchup but of course we were all there for the pre-release weekend we know how this deck works yada yada it's more so the fact that this deck builds hands so quickly from the genesis to every time they swing to the not to the yamato not yamato but to the nami effect once you get to that late stage where they drop like the luffy into the uta you have the hody great but do you have the the power to get through all the cards they have in hand often not so much especially if they decide to keep taking every hit and then just wall out at the end of the game it's it can be pretty challenging at least i think so but i will have to get a lot more practice into this matchup to give you like a definite you know maybe it was just that one of i got unlucky type thing i don't know but something i'll have to explore more but that was my only loss for wednesday and then yesterday we took this list to another locals and we ended up playing against the sakazuki we, we lost in, sorry, we played Sakazuki, Gekko Moria, Katakuri, Katakuri, and Katakuri. Our only loss was to Gekko Moria. We did go second, so we did lose the die roll, unfortunately. I ended up getting two Hody Jones and a Yamato off of my trigger, which that was it at that point, like, to be fair. Now, the reason why going into a Gekko Moria match is pretty spooky as Yamato, especially if you go second, was because what I mentioned previously, they build wide so fast. Like, they build a board state and they're smacking you for 5k almost every time outside of their leader swing. And they have access to, like, Absalon, uh, Rob Lucci, and all that. And which we don't play a lot of bodies on board, so I'm not really worried about that outside of, like, doing my little combo here, which is fine. But it's more so, I think the triggers really did me in there seeing double Hody back to back off triggers and then a Yamato one was pretty much just GG at that point but I don't want to say it was just bad you know bad card draw or what have you or I got unlucky because that's the nature of yellow you know what I mean you high roll sometimes you don't high roll but just to see like double of these and that it feels like sim shuffled my deck you know what I mean but overall we had a great time especially into the Katakuri matchups in which Katakuri for Yamato, like I said before, I don't feel is all too spooky. It's a match that you can win going first and going second. Now, it is challenging. I'll give you that. It's very difficult, especially if you try to, like, you know, stack your life by any means because Katakuri can peek it and move it. But as long as they're not bouncing multiple Sanjis off their life, most of the time you can take the W. Especially if you guys can get them down to one and or two life before the seven drop mom. It's generally a good time for most Yamato decks. Sakazuki matchups are straight, I guess, straightforward, really. It's kind of like playing Reiju into this. You have so much pressure, considering Reiju goes wide and just keeps on smashing face. Yamato is kind of the same scenario. You just keep smashing face until they need to play down blockers, and then you have the resting with the Hodis and the Marus. You're getting 2Ks out of their hand with the Onamis because they don't want to get them banished. It's a pretty, not necessarily hard matchup for Yamato to win this one. But overall, these have been the changes which I've made to the list. And this is going to be something I'm going to be playing with going forward. Some of these cards here really did shine and some didn't. So in this aspect, we included Satori. 
And this is a very, very strong card in Yamato, let alone just like in the current meta. Anything that you can get off trigger to play on board, like, you know, Sanji, Cracker, Paro Sparrow, all that sort of thing. Obviously not Paro here, but you know what I mean. This is really good because especially in matchups such as like Sakazuki, Gekko Moria, having that extra body on board or Perona, for instance, because she can't rest this, this is very strong. Now, I have opted on taking at least two of these out. I know that's crazy. Just to add in two Hatchins like we played with earlier, just so we can have a little bit more consistency to draw into a 2K or draw into one of these with, with Kami effects, which is really nice. That's just something I thought about. If not, I would dump down two Amarus to do it, but that's something I have to do a little bit more of a testing with ratios. But currently, this is a very strong card, I think, and I want to keep it in the list just for what it does. Now, we don't run Shura, and I haven't ran Shura here in this list. I don't necessarily think I need it. Shura does allow you to pull this and that, that, and that, you know, does the thing. But uh, just like Kami, you often are not swinging with these two because you have to give two Don from Leader Effect and put another Don on it. Sometimes you do get swings in with this and or Shura, but I feel like adding in both searchers is unnecessary. So this is why we chose to run Kami over Shura, even though we have a Sky Island with a Fishman package here. I think Kami is the more valuable one because we, we need the Hody Jones, where Shura just pulls out like your own or like a 2K for me. And oftentimes I have this in hand or I have this in hand to trigger off the Mihawk effect. I have like one or the other. So, but in any case, now there have been other cards in this list that did not get a lot of value. So just Yamato. I've seen a lot of people out there play with the Zoros. I like the Zoro. I just don't care for it as much. I do want to try it out, but I feel I'm either winning the game super hard and I don't necessarily have time or have a need to drop a Zoro or Yamato on board and there are occasions where I could drop this so for instance like I said you want to get your opponent down to three as quickly as you possibly can that way you, your triggers can start you know playing whether you're you're using um, Kikyo or Nekomushi or whatever other uh, three drop from Wanu that you have to have your opponent at a certain life state like um where's your boy at like Inarashu here or like i said neko they have to be at three right and which is great but in that situation you can opt to run other cards be it that with the yamato here if you're healthy by the time nine dawn comes you don't really need to drop this at all and I feel like when you do need to drop it when you're at one life, you generally probably lost the game, like to be fair, because this uses up nine Dawn already. You only put one on leader. This isn't like a queen deck, you know, I do think it's nice because it gives you an extra life. But the reality of it is the nine here, Yamato or the Zoro is probably not going to stick on board. If they do, great, you win. But if they don't, it's just you played. You spend a turn to play it for them to just immediately remove it with double ice ages or whatever so i was debating on taking this out because i didn't get value with it and upping either like a 2k counter here with hiori or going up on this as well my other option that i wanted to do is put in your boy and have a good time with the noah's ark this is something i will probably do at the end date of the future product here because I do think this card is pretty gross. But uh, we'll talk about it and we'll get into it in another video. The next upcoming video here will be Yamato and Fortress. That's not going to be the next video coming out. But later down the line we'll be diving into a Fortress build at some point here on the channel. But either way. This has been Pause Players. Remember to smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe for your content when it comes to all things One Piece. Please man, hit that like button. It helps me out. Gets the videos floating around. And I will catch you guys in the very next video. And I will see y'all at locals enjoy your day i'm gonna head out